God. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome everyone. And thank you so much for joining the Diana Wright Show live from around the world and in the United States. We say a special good evening to each and every one of you and hope that you did your I Love Me exercise today, this morning, this afternoon, this evening. And of course, before you go to bed, just pass by that pit mirror and look in it and say, I love me. I remember, Diana, I remember, I remember. I'm going to be in your head, in your face until April 30th when it's International I Love Me Day declared by the Diana Wright Show live. I'm going to pester you until you love yourself. Stop trying to be someone else. Stop trying to want someone else's life and stop replaying those negative things that people have said to you, including your parents, since you were a little person, little girl, little boy, and those things are going over in your head and you can't shake it. Or some mean friend or mean ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend told you something you just can't shake. You need to shake it. I'm going to have to get you to shake it, shake it, shake it until you get to the place that you can simply go to that mirror and say, I love me. And come April 30th, it's the International I Love Me Day. You're going to celebrate yourself, do something good for yourself, something wonderful for yourself. I mean, you should actually be doing that all the time, but I know you don't have time all the time because, you know, especially women, we want to try to do it all. We want to try to have the babies. We want to try to have the career. We want to try to have the husband. And we want to try to be the maid do. <laughs> so no, you cannot be the maid do. You need to get someone to clean your house. <laughs> get a house cleaner to clean your house and pay that 60 or whatever dollars it cost in your neck of the woods because I know I'm speaking to you from around, around the world and in the United States so every state is different prices are different you know you have rent a spouse you have rent a husband you have occasional wife I mean there's so many companies out there catering to this kind of thing and you need to make use of it don't allow yourself to say I can't afford to pay a house cleaner you can afford to pay a house cleaner to clean your house once a week or twice a week or some people once every two weeks. Once a month is stretching it too far. I believe that my house must be cleaned every week. Okay, so <laughs> you should do that for yourself. So loving yourself, that's one of the things here. Happiness is also what I've been on my theme this week. And, you know, it's always happy for me to talk about Dax when he's on on a Wednesday morning. And we talk about wellness and the wellness lifestyle. And yes, Dax, I did get my package of detox. So I will be reading it later before I go to my bed. And then I will start and I will call you for directions <laughs> and instructions. Okay, so thank you so much for that. And we're going to get on the bus with the wellness lifestyle lifestyle and of course I never like to talk about things that I've not used myself I'm not like some of those stars on television that they you, they're paying them to say what they say and they don't even know the product they've never even used the product I like to experiment with things before I actually talk about them and also same thing for when I'm gonna interview an author I like to read the book if I don't even get through the entire book I want to be able to read it quickly before I start talking nonsense. All right. So if you are an author and you'd like me to do a book review with you and interview you on the program, you can send us a book. Just give us a call at 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. And we will certainly accommodate you and your book because I think the, 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 the scale is just kind of stacked up against little people like us who don't have the big kahunas of NBC and CBS and ABC and we're not, um, you know, uh, the lady who heads up Google and she writes a book and she gets instant um, coverage. You know, we have to start from my end. And once you get on my end, you never know who's watching on YouTube or on my website. 
and that person might be able to take you to the next level. Also, asking you if you know any young person who is out there who is doing very well, because I have a segment called Young Power on the show, that I'd like to celebrate that young person, celebrate what they're doing, their hard work, they're going to college, they're working, they're doing well in high school, whatever it is, they're pursuing their passion, they're passionate about what they're doing, and you're also teaching them to love themselves because it's not just about studying and it's not just about making money. It's also about finding inner peace and finding happiness and joy within yourself because no one can make you happy. You have to take the reins and make yourself happy. You have to be the one that allows no one to steal your joy and you're the one that has to make sure that you find peace which takes away all your stress and everything else because stress without any disease can actually do you in just in case you didn't know and don't forget to breathe as Dax reminded us today and keep drinking water a sip at a time if you hate water just spice it up with some lemon some real lemon not the thing in the bottle he said so go out and get yourself some I, I think he called it small lemons or mama, small limes or whatever. I wrote it down somewhere, but you have to access it at Whole Foods, I think. So we try to do that and try to be healthy. Try to do the best you can. Not everybody's going to look like a stick and wear a size two, but you can be wearing a size four, a size six, a size eight, ten, and feel healthy and strong within yourself. So I'm going to try the detox thing and I'm going to tell you day by day how I'm doing. If I'm cheating or I'm not cheating, I think I should kind of start it after the weekend. How about Monday, Dax? <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, thank you so much again for joining me. And we welcome you to the program. And we hope that we will inspire you and we will give you information that you probably never you know, had time to check out today. And we will also lift your spirit by trying to getting you out of any blues that you might be in. Whatever the devastation in your life, I promise you, there's someone else out there that their devastation is worse than yours. So come with me on this journey and love us on Facebook and Twitter. And also, please give us a thumbs up on Facebook and spread the word. Tell your friends about the program and tell them to call in and be part of the conversation. All right. Okay, let's begin with, uh, shall I begin with crazy Michelle Bachman, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. How many Pinocchios is she going to get for lying and always lying on the president? I have a feeling deep down in my spirit that Michelle Bachman is actually in love with President Obama because she comes up with the craziest things about President Obama. First it was, what was she saying? Last year she was saying something else. The year She finds something to come up with. Now she's saying that President Obama has someone being paid to walk his dog. I gather the person that's being paid to walk his dog is actually his housekeeper, who that's part of her duties to walk the dog. What's the matter, Michelle Bachman, Congresswoman? Don't you think that the black man deserves all the perks of the White House that the white man gets? What is your problem with President Obama? She lies and she lies and she lies and she goes on. I think one of the newspapers gave her four Pinocchios today. How many Pinocchios is she going to get? She just makes up things. She talks about, remember she was talking about um, some girl who um, got disabled because she got some shot. Oh my goodness. Whoa, some vaccination that she got, she became disabled. She doesn't even check her facts before she spurted out. And then she had to be running from the CNN reporter because she didn't want to answer the question because she can only speak when she goes to CPAC see that's the thing with these Republicans they seem to only have a voice and strength and vigor when they're in front of their own people at CPAC who roars and cheers because like comedian Sarah Palin the things that she was saying I think she's trying to get a job as a comedian now so she's using CPAC as a springboard to do so because I guess the reality show thing didn't work out so well. Because who's interested in seeing Sarah Palin in them big old pants going in the water and trying to catch fish and try to impress us? 
And she's trying to impress us by using a big jug of soda to kind of jerry, 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 tease, tease, tease Mayor Bloomberg. Mayor Bloomberg is bigger than Sarah Palin. And she is lying to you because she went on a diet. Don't you see how slim she is? She ain't drinking no big juggle of soda. She's trying to kill you while she's taking care of herself. So don't listen to Sarah Palin. It's all about the money for Sarah Palin, Rick Santorum. Oh my goodness. They all are in the money grabbing business. And they all go and get the job with Fox after they done lied to the American people about what they're trying to do and what they want to do. They don't give a hoot about us. They want for themselves power. Just like Rand Paul right now is trying to convince us that he's no longer the Tea Party candidate. But he still is. The Tea Party candidate. Libertarian. Remember his dad. Oh, everybody's saying, oh, he's a little more flexible than his dad. Not so sure about that. We just have to watch and see. And that Marco Rubio, he's been quiet all week. So, let's continue with Miss Crazy, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Okay. So she envies the president for having someone walking Bo. How can you be jealous of Bo? Michelle, you're jealous of Bo? Come on now. Anyway, she says that the Obamas have someone there to get their movies ready for movie night watching. And the person sometimes sleep at the White House because they have to be there at the mercy and at the beck and call of the Obamas. How could that be even true? That doesn't even make sense to be true. So we know you're lying, Michelle Bachman, Congresswoman Crazy from Minnesota. Uh-oh. Let's go. She now says the president has five chefs on Air Force One to suit his fancy of whatever he meals he need. And so what? Is the president entitled to five chefs on Air Force One? That's what I'd be more interested in. Did Bill Clinton or George W. have five chefs on Air Force One or did they not? Is this part of being president or is it not? Now that's what would interest me. If the president is having excessive luxury while we are out here struggling, then I would want to say something about that. But if the president is having all the normal luxuries of a president, then I would say, Go for it, my president. Love you. Enjoy it while you can. Because you only have eight years to do so. And we have the rest of our lives to pursue our passion and love ourselves and be who we are. He only have eight years to do that. And if he messes up this time, he ain't running for no more office. So he can gamble a little more than he could have gambled the last four years. So let's give the guy a break. What's she talking about now? She's back on this Benghazi thing. And, oh, president was missing in action the night when four Americans were dying in Benghazi. Okay, Congresswoman, let's be honest. Congresswoman Michelle Bachman from Minnesota. No. The president was not in any secret place, which you all would like us to believe. I noticed that Senator McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham have kind of gone off that broken record. Now she's taking up the cause of Benghazi. Now can we just allow the four people who died in Benghazi, regrettably so, to rest in peace as their families are actually asking us to do? Leave them alone and let them rest. Take rest. And Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, I thought she had kind of got quieted down because she almost lost her seat in the last election in 2012. She just won by the skin of her nose. So I guess she went into remission for a while and now she's back gun ho at the president. Well, I tell you what, Congresswoman Bachman, people are going to call you out on your lies. She was on every network today because everyone wanted to shame her into her lies. 
Okay, what else is she saying now? Let's see. She is the one... And she's talking about all she's thinking about at seatback. You know, we are people of love. No, you are. You're not. You are the hater. I have never seen any female that seems so bitter and so hateful towards President Obama. For what reason? I don't know. And if she was speaking the truth, it would be actually okay. But every time you check the facts, she's always lying. Don't dress it up. She's not telling the truth. She is simply lying. That's what it is. So let's give her not four Pinocchios like the paper. She needs like 10 Pinocchios to get her straight. How about that? I think that's a better job. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my goodness. Congresswoman, she, and she looks good. She had on her nice green dress. So just enjoy the moment, your dress and everything else that goes with it. And leave President Obama alone and stop lying on the brother. <laughs> I'm going to call him the brother right now. <laughs> okay, moving on to President Obama now. And he's in Israel. And you see all the campaigning in 2012. When Mitt Romney and the entire Republican Party we're saying, oh, President Obama is throwing Israel under the bus. And oh, Netanyahu came to the White House and was very rude to the president, in my opinion. From a leader to another leader. Yeah. And the Republicans were all saying, oh, yes, he doesn't like Jewish people. And he's this and he's that. And how ashamed are we today? When we watch television and we see... Prime Minister Netanyahu and our beloved President Barack Obama walking down the red carpet in Israel, in Tel Aviv, coming off the plane, greeting his counterpart, and they look to be chummy chummy. They might be just doing it for the cameras, but I don't think they could have pretended for such a period. Because you see... President Obama took off his jacket. They were both wearing blue ties and white shirts. And when President Obama took his jacket off, Prime Minister Netanyahu reciprocated and took off his jacket too and sling it over his shoulder with his finger. So what don't you like about this? And why do you all keep saying wrong things about President Obama? What is the reason the guy can do no right for the Republicans and the Tea Partiers? So they go and they have a joint press conference. And it's very cordial and fabulous. And President Obama is admiring uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's sons, who he says are handsome. And then Netanyahu again reciprocates and saying, your two daughters are beautiful. And President Obama in his joking self says, you know, we marry women that, you know, make us better than we really are. Light moments like that. That's what we want to see from our leaders. Not people trying to stir up things and talk about President Obama is throwing Israel under the bus. He could not be the president of the United States and throw Israel under the bus anyway. So that's the reason we should never have believed that lie. And some people did. Because Mitt Romney kept harping on it. And remember the day that he went up on his stage and talked about how much he loves Israel? Mm -hmm. Why can't politicians speak the truth? I think if politicians start speaking the truth, they would be loved a little bit more. And their ratings in Congress, especially, would be a little higher. And if they learn to know the word compromise and negotiation, things might just be a little bit better for them in Washington, D.C. So, as we capture the moment and see the love fest between President Barack Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, I just felt so wonderful. And every reporter was reporting it in a different vein. And they spoke about Iran. Yes, they did. Some unspoken, some spoken. <laughs> they spoke about Syria. 
We don't know what they spoke about in that meeting that they were behind closed doors, just the two of them. And that's okay. We don't need to know because one of the problems in this country is that we want to know too many things that we shouldn't know. We want to know how the seals went into bin Laden's place. That's none of your business. Because if you give away the secrets... What do you think the guys overseas are looking for? Don't you see the photo, the video that they have of Bin Laden? Is Bin Laden sitting there in front of the satellite TV monitoring what's going on in America? Why do we believe that these people are living in the back of the woods and don't have satellite TV? They do. And they know exactly what's going on here. Don't forget that Atta and all those girls, those other guys who bombed, uh, did their wrong thing and running the plane through the uh, 9-11, running that, that plane through the towers. Where did they hear that? They heard it from the architect himself. And he said it years and years ago. I remember when I was going to college. And I'm watching my television in the morning and I'm hearing this guy say, oh, the only way they could destroy those towers is riding a plane through it. And I kept saying, why would he want to tell us that? Too much information. We don't need to know that. Just like we don't need to know the private, you know, conversations with the president in the situation room when they were planning to go in to Bin Laden's campus or whatever he was calling it, his compound. I don't think we need to know that. We, didn't, we, we simply don't know or we don't need to know again about exactly who the president is looking for and his team when it concerns drones. Yes, we want to know that he's not going to come and just do it willy-nilly in the U.S. against Americans. But we don't need to know what he's doing overseas and who he's trying to target. That's too much information. Because I bet you if anyone had leaked the information about them going, the SEALs going into Bin Laden's compound, it would not have been successful. Because somebody, when you tell someone something, it's no longer a secret. It's only the people that are involved in the process need to know. And it is actually on a need to know basis. Because when things are top secret, that's just what they mean. Top secret. Just like friends. You know, you have some girlfriends, they could have diary of the mouth. You say something to them and you say, don't tell anyone else. And then you hear it. The next avenue you go, you hear what you just said. People must understand what it means to be confidential. You should be able to share something with someone who you have confidence in and know that they won't repeat it unless you gave them permission to do so. Because you can tell someone something and say, okay, you can use this. It's okay. But please let us learn to be confidential. It's very important. And we need not know everything the president is doing in private. We do not need to know every detail of every meeting that the president has with Boehner. McConnell, Harry Reid. Speaking of Harry Reid, everybody's mad with him because he decided not to push forth the legislation to get a vote on gun control and background checks and assault weapons. He's putting it in what's called an amendment. So everybody's hopping mad about him, you know, because he's saying, oh, they only have, Dianne Feinstein only have 40 votes and, you know, um, he needs 60 votes and he's not going to put it on the floor. I think he should have put it on the floor and shame the Republicans when they vote against it. That's what you do. At least I thought that's what government was about, isn't it? So that people can actually own up to the things that they're supporting. Because if... And I knew that this was going to happen. Sandy Hook was all tears and sadness and weeping and wailing. But how many months later? We're actually not even going to bring that bill to the floor. Who knew? I knew. Because politicians, again, they get caught up in the moment. And they say things 
that they know they can't even achieve. So why do we do this? Why do we continue to lie to the people? And the governor in Carolina, who had the nerve, Governor Saunders, who he has, <laughs> Governor Sanford, who had the nerve to want to ask his wife, who he cheated on with his Argentinian lover. I was trying to get one of those love letters to read for you tonight, but I'll find it for tomorrow. <laughs> those love letters that he wrote and had the nerve to want his ex-wife to run his campaign to try to win a seat to Congress. I, I, you know, and he goes around and he's apologizing for his infidelity. If that was a woman, do you think she would have been forgiven? He actually won. They have to have a runoff election. But I think he's going to win anyway. But Stephen Colbert's sister is right there to take him up on the Democratic side in May. So we'll watch that one because that one to me is quite funny. Sanford, I cannot believe how that guy is just brave. He, he, I guess he knows that God has forgiven him. So he figures that everyone in his constituency must forgive him too. But it seems like they did because they voted for him. Yes, they did. So, alrighty. So we see that the president is getting along quite well with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And no one is throwing anyone under the bus. Okay. Wow. I, you know, <laughs> this healthcare thing is kind of making people do some crazy things. I'm not saying that companies should not have policies that encourages employees to be healthy. But I'm not sure that CVS has told their employees that they must tell the company how much they weigh or pay $600 a year starting May 1st. CVS warns its employees who use the company's health insurance plan to show up to a doctor for an annual WebMD wellness review and do tests for blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, and body weight. Now, I'm not so sure if this was the correct way to do it or would it be a little nicer if you kind of encouraged as opposed to warn. Those are strong words. But I guess employers do know right now that people can't just go out there and find a job so easily. So they will kind of take any abuse you give them because they're ha they have to get that paycheck. But CVS's policy also state, going forward, employees will be expected not just to know their numbers, but also to take action to manage them. So maybe I want to encourage each and every one of you out there around the world and in the United States to get on the detox plan that DAX is giving me to try. I just got it in the mail. So maybe you should all be calling Dax <laughs> because it seems like not many of us are going to have any jobs <laughs> based on what these companies are saying. So let me just remind you of Dax's number. His number, 888-866-786-3617. And his website is R-A-D, the number four, the letter U, Dot com. You might just want to write that down and I'm going to repeat that because based on all that, this is, CVS is not the first company. There are other companies out there doing it and, you know, asking for your weight and asking you to weigh in and asking you to do all kinds of things. So 866-786-3617, R-A-D, the number four, U.com. That's the information for Dax Dunn, who is on my program every Wednesday. And what we do here, we promote wellness. Wellness and 
There's a 21 day detox that he is recommending. And like I said, I'm going to start it myself and see if I can just trim down all the fat anywhere it is. Just strike it out. <laughs> so I want you to join me in doing this detox. All right. And see how well we can become so that if we work for people like CVS, we won't have to worry about giving them the numbers for our cholesterol and our blood pressure and our blood sugar levels. Okay. Because I know that the folks at CVS right now, especially the people who are overweight, they are totally stressed out, which is just going to make it worse for them. So I empathize with all the employees at CVS. My pharmacy, because that's where I go for just about everything. But I hope CVS will find a kinder, gentler way of easing this in before May 1st. And don't warn, please, don't warn your employees when you're trying to tell them to do something good for themselves. You should never warn your children to do, you, you know, you want your child to do something good, but you're going to warn them into doing it. No, a nice cajoling, you know, encouraging would be a little better, I think. Don't you? I think so. Okay. A very, very nice discovery about our new Pope. And you notice I say our new Pope because I consider him my Pope now because he is the man, Pope Francis the first. So Pope Francis is not just, you know, a Pope. He had his days of being the charmer. Yeah. So Pope Francis suggested in an interview last year, just last year, that the Catholic Church's rule that priests be celibate can change and admitted he was tempted by a woman, a young seminarian. Who knew? Well, she actually spilled the beans. So I think what they did was they went and found the interview uh, that Pope Francis did. So now we have the goods. So he said that the married clergy of the Eastern churches are very good priests. And those pushing for the same in Roman Catholic, Catholic churches do so with a certain pragmatism. For now, though, the, dis the discipline of celibacy stands firm. So don't think Pope Francis is going to come in and change a whole lot of stuff because he's very conservative from all the research that I've done. He added that priests should quit if they can't abstain from sex or if they get a woman pregnant. So all the priests that are out there, if you cannot abstain from sex, that includes trying to have sex with young boys. You should. He didn't say the young boys part. I'm putting that in. You should quit. Mm-hmm. If you can't be celibate, you need to quit. And not being with a woman is not the only part of celibacy. You should not be going man to man either or woman to woman. That is celibacy, period. Okay, the former cardinal, of course, you know, at that time, he was Cardinal Jorge Bogoglio. He comments, and this was published in the Spanish language book. And the book was called, or is called, On the Heavens and the Earth. Translated by the Catholic news website, Alitia. And these were made when he was Archbishop, of course, of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Okay, Father Thomas Rees, a Vatican analyst for the National Catholic Reporter, said he was surprised by the remarks of Pope Francis because the last few popes have been pretty clear. They were not open to changing it or having a discussion about it. But Pope Francis is actually willing to have a discussion about priests getting married. Mm. So while Pope Francis certainly wasn't advocating for a rule change, it looks like he may be willing to talk about it. 
Now, isn't that what everyone wanted for him to at least put things on the table? I think this Pope, Pope is going to be wonderful. The future Pope began to, this is at the time now, began the conversation with a personal anecdote from his years as a seminarian. <laughs> I think he's also funny, you know. I, I really think that he has some clown genes in him. <laughs> he said this. This is Pope Francis when he was cardinal. I was dazzled by a girl I met at an uncle's wedding. I was surprised by her beauty, her intellectual brilliance. And well, I was bowled over for quite a while. I kept thinking and thinking about her. When I returned to the seminary after the wedding, I could not pray for over a week because when I tried to do so, the girl appeared in my head. <laughs> now, you know, Pope Francis, then Cardinal, is really a funny guy. I had to rethink what I was doing. He said he had to choose between the girl and the priesthood. And though he picked the latter, which is the priesthood, he knows not everyone could do so. So, the Pope added, when something like this happens to a seminarian, I help, <laughs> I help him go in peace to be a good Christian and not a bad priest. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm serious. He is funny. We're going to have fun with this Pope, I can tell. In the Western Church, he continues to speak now. In the Western Church, to which I belong, priests cannot be married as in the Byzantine, Ukrainian, Russian, or Greek Catholic churches. In those churches, the priests can be married. So I guess if you want to be married as a priest, you need to go to those countries. But the bishops have to be celibate. They are very good priests. In Western Catholicism, some organizations are pushing for more discussion about the issue. For now, the discipline of celibacy stands firm. Some say with a certain pragmatism that we are losing manpower. If hypothetically, Western Catholics were to review issue of celibacy. So my question to you is, should priests actually continue to be celibate or should they be allowed to marry? Or do you think that if they marry, it would help to cut down the sex abuse of young boys in the priesthood? I think it would do, it would do so for cultural reasons, as in the East, not so much as a universal option. He also said, for the moment, he was in favor of maintaining celibacy, the celibacy rule, that is, because we have 10 centuries of good experiences rather than failures. He added that it is a matter of discipline, not of faith. It can change. Wow. In the meantime, though he said celibacy should not be treated with a wink and a nod, any priest that strays and becomes a father has to leave the ministry. Wow. Now, if a priest tells me, that's him speaking again, he got excited and that he had a fall, I help him to get back on track again. There are priests who get on track again and others who do not. The double life is no good for us. I don't like it because it means building on falsehood. Sometimes I say, if you cannot overcome it, make your decision. So to all the priests who are watching from around the world and in the United States, or if you're related to one or no one, the Pope is simply saying, if you could not be true to your celibacy, then maybe you need to choose. Maybe you're not right for the priesthood. Especially those Jesuit priests, they're very strict with it. So, 
as I move to this now, which he says, living in falsehood, I move to another falsehood story. Mm -hmm. Cheating universities, colleges, and law schools. Now, if we can't even trust the universities and the colleges and the law schools to tell our children the proper information and stop cheating and lying and making up numbers, what else? What else do we have to do to get people to be honest? Just speak the truth. Tell the truth. And don't forget, April 30th, na International I Love Me Day. Yes, it's coming. It's closer. It's getting closer. And also, I want to remind you of October 5. Just save that date because we have something planned for you from courtesy of Save a Life Jamaica Foundation. You're going to have a great time saving lives at the same time. So, we ask you to save that date and we ask you to circle in big red, red circle, April 30th, International I Love Me Day. I know that this is going to be, become just as big as Valentine's Day. Yes, we're going to probably start off, you know, with not enough people knowing, but the word will spread like wildfire. I'm putting that out in the universe. And I will be successful with the I Love Me crusade because I believe everything in your life begins within you, within your heart, within your soul, and your body. And don't forget to listen to that small voice that speaks to you all the time. When you're going down the right, wrong path, there's always that, that little voice telling you, don't go. But a lot of us refuse to listen to that small voice. And we should. Because most of us, if we believe in God and His Spirit, it's the God that's actually speaking to us through His Son, Jesus. Okay? All right, so let's go down the line here. In the past year alone, six... And I'm really sorry for the young people now who are going to college because it's such a big process. It's like a performance. You know, you have to take the SATs and then you have to apply to all these 10 schools and then you have to pay all that money to, for the application for each school. And some schools will oblige you by giving you a transfer to their school one year later. Oh my goodness, what a drama. It used to be so easy to get into college. You take your SATs and you pick the college of your choice and you go there and you speak your mind and boom, you're in. Wow, it's such a magnanimous process. And yet we find out that in the past year alone, six top colleges and universities have admitted falsifying information sent to the U.S. Department of Education, their own according accrediting agencies also, and U.S. News whose college rankings remain the nation's most prominent. So when you see those lists on the internet, I would read them no more. I will believe and trust them no more. You know, best colleges to go in America. Top colleges to go for law school. This, that, you know. It's all fake. It's all fraud. I think there's one school, Texas uh, Christian College. I think that's the only one that came out looking clean. But anyway, let's continue here. Because this is actually important, you see, parents, because when you're thinking of spending all that money to send your children to school, you need to be getting the truth from these administrators. And they need to stop lying. Okay. A senior administrator at Claremont McKenna College resigned after admitting that he falsified admissions test scores submitted to U.S. News and the U.S. Department of Education. For years, his name is Bucknell, inflated the mean SAT scores of entering students by an average of 16 points. Not 6 points, not 10 points, 16 points. The university's president, he basically admitted it, because I guess he just couldn't lie anymore. Tulane's business school gave U.S. News false data 
about its number of applicants and inflated their average scores on admissions tests by 35 points. <laughs> now, you know, these guys, are they trying to set an example for the students who are coming in or are we just living in a pretense world right about now? I really think we are. You know, in Qatar, they're trying to duplicate all the Ivy League schools in America, in Qatar. Yeah, the king, that's what he's doing. Because he believes that the Ivy League education in this country and non-Ivy League schools in this country are so good that he's willing to replicate them no matter how much it costs. And we are going to screw the whole thing up because we just have to tell a lie and we just cannot speak the truth and we just cannot not falsify documents. None of us are perfect. I'm not. We all make mistakes about things, but this is at a high level where people are expecting that what a university say to them is what they should be believing. But now... We hear that we can't believe that. Okay. Emory University, which is called the Ivy League University of the South, misreported student data to U.S. News and other organizations that rank universities and colleges, providing the much higher SAT averages of students who applied and were admitted, rather than those who enrolled. It also inflated entering students' class ranks. Two former admissions deans and other administrators were aware of the practice. Now, I am not, sometimes I'm kind of lost for words when I see these things happening, how crazy they are and how dishonest people really are. The same energy that it takes to do something fraudulent, it's the same energy it takes to speak the truth. So why aren't we not speaking truth and choosing the path of truth? George Washington University. Wow, that's a big one. Overstated the proportion of its entering freshmen who were in the top 10% of their high school classes. The law school at the University of Illinois was caught providing inaccurate admissions information to the American Bar Association, <laughs> otherwise known as the ABA. And they're the ones who accredits law schools. The same thing happened in 2011 at the Villanova University of Law. Illinois Law School was publicly censured and fined $250,000 by the ABA and Villanova's was placed on probation for two years. 15 other law schools have faced lawsuits for fraud, unfair competition and false advertising for allegedly misreporting graduates job placement rates by including part-time and temporary work and employment unrelated to law. A lot of these colleges, whether they're Ivy League or they're not, they run these ads on television parents and they're telling your children, oh, when you graduate, we have all these companies that will hire you. Make sure you double check by crossing your, your T's and dotting all your I's before you believe these things as truth. We need to be proactive as parents and not allow our children to get swept up in this Ivy League and college, city college, and not so great a university, and all that crap. And don't you see? All the billionaires, almost all of them, I think except the guy who started PayPal, because I think he went to Sanford and was very brilliant. But everybody else, from Gates to Zuckerberg, name them. All dropouts and all those successful actors. Some of them were prison birds, came out and became actor. Okay? So let us not cheat the children out of what they think they're getting. And the parents who go about and 
brag about their children and, you know, say they're going to this and this Ivy League school. When in turn, the school is no Ivy League. Because if you're, if you're falsifying your documents, you ain't no Ivy League. <laughs> wow. My goodness. Wow. All right. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I'm saddened by this. I really am. Students and their families applying to other kinds of colleges and universities will have to rely on internal whistleblowers who exposed all the other instances of falsifications over the last year, except at Texas Christian and now law schools. You know, this is just shameful. New, actually right about now, the federal government, I hope that you are watching the State of the Union because the federal government has unveiled a new college selection tool for families called the College Scorecard. Lauded by President Barack Obama in his State of the Union address last month. Actually, that was in January, not last month. And launched, actually it was launched the next day after the State of the Union, which was in January. Which streamlines and expands information about cost, graduation rate, average debt of graduates, and loan default rates in a centralized, searchable government website. So you might want to check that out, parents, before you actually commit yourself to any school. I guess the bottom line really is that Jane Shaw, president of the John W. Pope Center for Higher Education Policy, she said, the bottom line is that students and their parents should resist the inclination to blindly believe information provided by even well-regarded universities and colleges in the United States and wherever else you go. It's, it's, it's kind of sad that all, everything we do has to involve a lie, has to be not pure, not true. I'm going to take a slight um, turn now and I'm going to read you another one of the happiness thing articles that I found. This lady, her name is Diane Belly. She's 60 years old, senior care in her own words. Am I happier now than when I was younger, she asks. I have a lot more to feel grateful about. I have the experience to know that life goes on in the face of extreme challenges. Time has burnished the love I feel for my work. Helping the Asian American community age with confidence and the people in my life, also my husband Joe and I enjoy trying new things. We have been dancing the Argentine tango for five years. So you can find your happiness and your joy and your peace in several little things and I'm here to encourage you to do so because you must start from a place of loving yourself and then you will truly be able to be happy. You will be able to find that joy that we all are looking for and that peace. Because when you say the word peace, you should breathe and relax because it actually the word peace should take you down from your stress. Just tell yourself, be peaceful, be mindful of what I need to do for myself. Did I look in the mirror today and say to myself that I love me or did I not? I need to, I must. And if you have to look in that mirror and say it a hundred times, I really don't care. As long as you get to the place of happiness, joy and peace. And I am able to get you out of whatever rut you're in. And I promise you that all that I'm telling you on this Diana Wright show live every Monday to Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. is from my own experience. And you will see it in my book coming soon. Deadly Negligence. And when you think your world is going so beautiful and so wonderful and everything seems perfect, you just never know what one moment, 
one phone call, one letter in the mail can do to your life. In my case, you will find out what caused my tragedy and how it affected my family. And I promise you, it is a good read and everything in my book is true. Nothing made up. Maybe some names were changed because, you know, you never know. But the people who did good, their names are all in there. And I urge you to come out of the hole that you're in because staying there only takes you down further. You need to, and you, I command you to get up, stand up in front of that mirror and talk to yourself. Even the young man who recorded that 47% video of Mitt Romney being so relaxed while he dismissed half the country and half of us. He said when he looked in the mirror and looked at himself when he was pondering should he or should he not put the, the tape out there. His mirror talked back to him and said, you coward, do something. And that's what I want for you. I want for you to look in that mirror and let the mirror speak to you because then you are empowered to speak to yourself. The greatest voice that you have is your voice. So speak to yourself, speak positive energy into yourself. And do me a favor, never, ever, ever put out negative words to your children because they will take it with them to their graves and it will haunt them for the rest of their lives, even if they pretend that their life is now beautiful and wonderful in their quiet moments rehearsing and going around and around in their brain. In their subconscious mind what you said oh you're not gonna turn out to be any good never tell a child that that child will never forget those words and those are the people that I want to reach out to especially because those are the people it's harder for them to love themselves because of the words that you told them some of us parents can be destructive to our own children so we need to make sure the words we are spewing are good ones, positive ones, encouraging ones, praising ones. I don't believe in rewarding children for things that they should be doing. Like I tell my daughter, don't tell me that I should celebrate because you got an A. That's what you're supposed to do. That's your job. You don't go to work, you go to school, and going to school is your job right now. Until you finish college, it is your job. Because I'm not asking you to go out and find another job on top of that job. So it is your job exclusively. And you must be committed to that job. And whatever we're doing in this life, we need to be committed. People just kind of do things willy-nilly nowadays. Nobody is faithful to anyone. No one is loyal to their friend. Oops. We need to get back to basics. Be kinder. Be gentler. I remember the days with my grandmother. Everyone, see, yes, there were always evil people. <laughs> There's always going to be Miss Lash down the street that lives on your block. And there's always going to be some Hitler person in your neighborhood on your association board. But you can rise above them and above what they're doing. If you are loving who you are and your confidence is on target, your self-esteem is there. Self-esteem, self-confidence. You have to give it to yourself. That's the reason they call it self-esteem and self-confidence. So let us. And also forgiving, forgiving, oh my goodness, when you forgive someone, it's like the world has come off your shoulders. So have no one else, no one up in your heart. If it's a family member, if it's a 
friend, whatever, whomever. See, when I have an argument with a friend or a friend disappoints me, I have no problems. Because once I speak my mind, it's done. I still love you. I still care for you. I still want you to be my friend. I just don't know that I can't do certain things or ask you to do certain things because you won't be reliable. But you're still my friend. I still love you. But you have to meet people where they are. Because you can't, in general terms, we cannot change people. We cannot get people to be who we want them to be. We're all individuals. And I can't get my child to be the person I want her to be. She has her own personality and will evolve into her own person as she grows. And yes, as I told her, you are allowed to change your mind. Today you might love something. You're allowed to change your mind next week that you don't like it anymore. It's okay. So I encourage you tonight, and we're going to get to the rest of the stories tomorrow morning. Because I just want to say thank you so much for joining me from around the world and in the United States. The internet is a fantastic thing. And I want to continue to say thank you to Pastor Blackwood, Anthony Blackwood in Atlanta, in Marietta, Georgia, his church, Alive Christian Center. He has been my guide and my support in doing this. Actually, it was his idea in the first place. It wasn't mine. He's the one who told me all about this technology and what it can do for me. And he would like to see me back on the TV screen. So I'll be eternally and everlastingly grateful to him for his continued support. Sometimes I don't call because I'm, I'm afraid to call him again because I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going to call and ask another stupid question. <laughs> Okay, so, but you know, it's nice when you have people who know your talent and want to help you to let that talent shine. So I continue to thank Pastor Anthony Blackwood of Marietta, Georgia, a live Christian center. And if you're in Marietta, Georgia, and there's a chicken that they talk about in Marietta, his church is close to the chicken, <laughs> not far from the chicken, right? In the square. So you go and you. Fantastic praise and worship they have. And warm loving people. So. I will continue to be grateful. Thank you. Pastor Anthony Blackwood. Okay. Time to go. Time to say. Remember April 30th. Is International I Love Me Day. Remember October 5th. Five is a day that we, or the evening, that we give you a chance to save a life through Save a Life Jamaica Foundation. And also, we would like for you to like us and love us on Facebook. Give us a thumbs up. Go on Twitter. Tell all your friends about us. Come on, tweet about the Diana Wright Show. You know the drill. Give out the website. Site address, dianawrighttv.webs.com. Give it out. Give out the phone number. Let people join the conversation right here with me as we take the journey. And as we grow, I know everyone will be blessed. Thank you so much again for joining me. And don't forget, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never yours. I'll see you in the morning and I hope you have a blessed, restful night. Not to be tormented and watching late night television like me, <laughs> but going and getting your beauty sleep so you can wake up and be productive on your job or in your business place tomorrow. God bless. Stay prayed up and stay loving yourself. Ciao. Adios and au revoir. Okay.